from Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Interconnect 2016, brought to you by IBM. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for IBM Interconnect 2016. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Laura Sanders, GM, GTS System Services at IBM. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John. Thanks, Dave. Nice to see you, Laura. Thank you. We were you. just talking about OS2 and reminiscing <laughs> of the old days. Boy, have times changed. Um, going back, looking at what's happening now, it's pretty exciting. I, mean, I think this show really kind of looks at getting away from the speeds and feeds to, okay, integration's a new game, I got to deploy stuff, I got to transform, I need developers, all this is happening kind of at once. What's your take on it? I mean, what's your view on this? Have you seen the, the trajectories? What's your take on the current market right now? Well, we, have, we always had a joke in OS2 is, you know, we did it in four meg, you know? So it's really changed a lot, I think, from, like you said, just to focus on the technologies, really to how folks are really leveraging it. And I think, you know, the show, even today, having the, the clients, um, the users, the clients, and the startup to come in and say, here's how I'm leveraging the capabilities, as opposed to what we normally do is we stand up and say, let me show you 12 demos. Um, and I think that's real reality for what the clients are going through and what our value is to them. I kind of did a keyword, um snapshot of the of the keynotes on our intro segment here on the cube and it was uh, hybrid cloud all in cheap compute vmware open technologies video digital and apple developers yeah that kind of encapsulates essentially the keynote but all those things are threaded together what does that mean for the for the buyer of technology these days because you know, digitizing everything, certainly something we talked about on the intro is a goal of customers, that digital transformation. But now you have to maintain an existing base of the enterprise. That's a VMware touch point. You know, don't worry, nothing's going to break. But you got to bring in a new era of developing hybrid cloud. What does that mean for the customers? What's the impact to their business? Well, I think it, if you think about it from the customer standpoint of how they can help the business and or grow their business and how, how technology and the CIO can help help the business do that is, first of all, I mean, what, what great technology and capability and all these forces coming together to get you to digitization faster. I mean, if you're a business and you're not paying attention to the value of hybrid and how it could support you in you know, going to new channels, going faster to digitization, you're really missing the point. And then secondly, think about how all this helps the CIO, and we say this helps them go from the integrator of systems, so really like the old, let me put all the piece parts together, to a true integrator of services, because people need to buy as a service to stay up with this and then move forward with it. But I would say the, the, the big thing I would say to clients is don't miss it, because you probably won't be here if you do. You know? so <laughs> Who are the people that are actually creating those digital assets, the digital you know, companies? Who are they? And let's start there and sort of work back as to sort of how IBM you know, connects to them. What are they trying to do? Who are they? How do you help them? Yeah, so um, I guess I have an interesting vantage point. I mean, we're the world's largest um, services provider and we have been integrating hybrid for years and years and years and years. I mean, we're, I always say we don't just have one of everything, we have a hundred of everything. We probably have a thousand of everything. And what we see for the suppliers that come to us that want to offer things to um, the, the clients is it's about disruption. It's about the capabilities to do things, what we've always said, better, faster, cheaper, but also more integrated. And that's really helpful for us as a service provider because we've always had the requirement to show visibility and openness and, and help people take advantage of their entire compute models. And now the technology is helping us do that more and more. And so I think they really see, they, they see that they can make money doing it and they see they can do better if they work together and that's good for the industry. In our premises, they, you know, they don't wake up saying, oh, I want hybrid cloud. They work, the business people say, I want services yep. to create digital assets and allow me to transform my business. Yep. And so, so talk about, again, how IBM supports that connection, that integration. Yeah, point. so you heard um, Richard Holmes this morning from Westpac Bank. I mean, we started with Westpac uh, 
uh, and we manage uh, the environment with Richard, um, and we started with them quite a long time ago. And they came in and said, you know, I don't want that traditional tower model anymore. I want to offer as a service to my client base, and I want you to offer that to me, and I want to take advantage of these different compute models, and I want you to tell me which app to migrate, when they should migrate, how you're going to manage them, and by the way, I still want that single throat to choke. So the way we're, we're working with them today uh, in, in very real time is uh, using our brokerage capabilities to uh, look at their application environment and see which ones make the most sense for, for which environment uh, and, and put them over there and then also take them to a standard set of platforms so the application providers when we're doing DevOps, they know this is my platform, and I can allocate it. I mean, you heard Richard say we went from 84 days to, you know, basically minutes. And one of the reasons you're able to do that is not just because you have cool technology. It's because you have somebody like Richard that says, no, no, we're going to standardize on these things, you know. And so we really see the, the, the capability to help clients do that in, in any industry, whether it's banking, insurance, retail, et cetera. But you also need a good force inside the client that wants to change. Um, and I, everybody keeps saying, you know, disrupt or be disrupted. They're right. And one of the things we hear a lot, certainly I go to a lot of events with theCUBE, we talk to a lot of customers, your customers and, and other, your competitors' customers, and there's a kind of a recurring pattern. So I want to get your take on some patterns that you see out in the marketplace. One of them is, um, that we see is, oh, I need, a, I, have a, I need a retail app or I need a financial services app. That seems to be the conversation lead point, but it's not necessarily what the problem they're trying to solve. So, you say, oh, retail app or bank, oh, here's buy the software. It used to be the old way, that was a software, you come in, tweak it up and roll it out. But what they're really saying is, no, I want to change my retail component or my financial interface. Yes. But it becomes actually a DevOps problem. So the, it's a horizontal value chain. How do you guys see that one? And what are some of the patterns that you guys are seeing? Because a lot of people are trying to figure out where do I focus? Certainly the app will be an endpoint. Um, is it in the, in the cloud? What are you seeing? Yeah, so um, we see a couple of, of key things of, of folks that are doing it well. One is they focus on the data platform. You know, if you don't focus on where, where and how you're going to leverage your data across any of these environments, it, it'd be like saying, you know, in the old days, I was going to have a ver I was going to have my data in, in uh, DB2, but only this tower and that tower could talk to it, and this tower wouldn't know anything. It's like, oh wait, they did used to do that. Remember? <laughs> Remember that? So now it's the ubiquity of that data, both for uh, systems of record and systems of insight, because um, that being able to leverage that data quickly into those systems of insight, which is what's creating a lot of those new channels. So we say, you know, number one, you know, have a, have a data strategy. And th the second thing is really think about the business problem you're trying to solve as opposed to I want to buy a tower of technology or I want to buy this capability. What is the business model, what is the business problem you're trying to solve? Are you trying to get an application to market more quickly or are you trying to open up a new channel? And then, okay, let's make a selection not just around that, but around your overall strategy for data and structure, and then the introduction or the move forward of that application. I think the more the CIO can think of, I'm behaving like a business person and I'm integrating services, as opposed to I'm setting up new platforms, the business will do better and better. And they'll speak the business's language. So a lot of people, when you know, cloud started to gain popularity, said, all right, deal sizes are going to get much, much smaller. You guys announced on your earnings call, you know, for Q4, that you did 70 deals in excess of $100 million last year, and 70% involved some type of hybrid cloud, IT, whatever you want to call it. What's going on? What did people miss? And help us peel the onion there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think it's, it's two things. One is there's a lot of uh, really large international companies out there that are intelligently saying, I don't want to just do this in one place. I want to do it. Uh, similarly all around the world, and so they're taking advantage of those capabilities. The second thing is, I, I, for some reason, people all thought cloud was the enemy of services management, and I mean, I just think it's absolutely funny. It's like, because clouds don't have to be managed? Uh, I don't know, they're gonna, uh, so anyway. So we've seen both ways, the, the very, very large deals, as you just quoted, um, stay uh, very healthy and active, um, and the 
the clients really wanting to take advantage of those models and wanting a single services integrator to do that. But we've also seen great growth in the smaller deals where clients are working on, I want this particular workload or I want this particular capability. I want to create this new channel. Can you just take care of that for me? Um, and being able to do that to manage anywhere for them is a really big load off their mind. I mean, they're interested, it's a leap of faith. One, they have, they're motivated to do it on their business side, but it's also the fear factor. You brought up the cloud threatens, not just my words, threatens IT. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, we've heard that before. Oh my God, my job security. When you automate away capabilities, that's an opportunity to shift the resource. Could you share your perspective on how those conversations go and where you've seen companies be successful? Because it's not so much about job elimination, per se. Yeah. If, if I, you have I, a programmable I, environment, and all digitally data is a, is a programmable data set, wouldn't it be an opportunity? So where are those opportunities? Yeah, so I'll use us as an example. I mean, obviously, uh, as a very, very large services provider, we have these great kind of skills that do this on behalf of clients. And let me tell you, they are not sitting there going, oh my God, I won't have to push that button anymore every day and retype all that in. That'll be awful. They're going, bring it on. Give me the API. Show me how to do this. And one of our fastest growing services is a managed service that allows our team to manage any kind of environment, hosted, uh, soft layer, Amazon, um, anything, you know, and, and do it for you in a repeatable fashion. And it's all about the value of common tooling, leveraging the cloud APIs, and moving forward. And let me tell you, they are excited about it. So those are your brokerage services? That, that, so that's that, our, our managed service. Some of that was service. through acquisition, and you had some of your own, and yeah. so you're bringing that together, is that Yeah, right? so we already have a very, very broad managed service, uh, both through our, our outsourcing and managed service business, and we always say we can manage from anywhere to anywhere. It's a very powerful statement. And then now being able to say, through cloud models and these heritage models like VMware uh, today, we can also help you plan, buy, and manage that application. So basically IT brokerage on top of that full management system and orchestrated, et cetera. So it's very, very powerful because you have both the automation, but you also have that awesome visibility for the client that says, select where you want to go based on the application attributes, decide how you're going to do it, and you have the workflow. But the other thing you have is you have total transparency in the operations and the billing. I mean, that's totally different than it used to be like, okay, here's my spreadsheet. And, you know. and repeatability globally. That changes your whole economic model, yep. doesn't it? I yeah. mean, it really starts to look more like software than it does services <laughs> to a point. I mean, you still need a lot of people. Every, but. Everything's, every, more repeatable you can make a service, <laughs> everything gets better. <laughs> you mentioned some cool things that I want to get your thoughts on, the renaissance of areas in, within the enterprise or in IT or in the, in the technology area that's being reborn again. It's always the new stuff. So talk about, uh, and there's always stuff that dies, if you will, if you don't pay attention to it, you're going you're gonna to die. But talk about the areas that you see that are new and compelling for IT and CXOs and CIOs, and other areas that are being reborn with, with energy. IoT, for instance, really has been around for a while in the data center, certainly IT service management, a lot of the kind of plumbing in the data center, that's been an IoT problem from day one. That's kind of an, uh, a random example of a, of a new reborn kind of fresh perspective. Where are the areas that are being energized that were traditionally kind of like ho-hum or just blocking and tackling uh, work in, in an enterprise? And what are the new areas? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> so I think it, it, I kind of take it in two phases. One is uh, there's a lot of things that are still the same. If you don't control your IT and don't manage it correctly, you know, you're not going to do very well with supporting your business and, and keeping up with it. And so things like integrated service management, uh, things like, you know, understanding your compliance and control. And from a negative side, you think about, um, you know, like the old spreadsheet days. Remember when everybody had their own spreadsheet, but the CFO really thought he knew what the financials were in the central system? So to me, that's kind of like the shadow IT. It's like, I, I don't have any shadow IT. Right. <laughs> so uh, you have all this great opportunity of all these uh, models that people can use, whether it's software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and they go out and use them. And the central business doesn't know about it, and they're getting all these issues with security, et cetera, and certainly 
burgeoning costs. But now if you flip that around and think about that as an opportunity, the fact that you can actually use those models and use those channels to go to market faster is a great opportunity for the business. And I do think for um, areas and industries like uh, industries that can use Internet of Things, they're really having to understand the value of IT to differentiate their business. I mean, who have ever thought you'd be monitoring a washing machine? But you can make a lot of money monitoring a washing machine. I, mean, I don't mean just being the monitoring, but if you know I'm out of detergent, you know, just think of all the 12 ways you can monetize that model or send me the right part or whatever. And so we really see the whole advent of the, the capabilities of IT coming directly into the boardroom over and over again, not just cost optimization. And all right, what do you guys see about IoT out there? Well, we see it certainly uh, proliferating inside the network, but there's always this edge of the network. If you have power and you have connectivity, Everything's IoT. It's already. true. So outside right. of that, it's a little bit dicey, if, but you know. If there's connectivity, then instrument it. It's and we're true. seeing all kinds of action at the edge, yeah. right? I mean, that really is where there's a lot of innovation. Laura, I wonder if you could, because you've got a good historical perspective here. You've seen the ebb and flow of IBM. What gives you confidence, generally for IBM and specifically for the services business, that you're in a good place now? Last you know, four or five years, Ginny's or, you know, orchestrated this massive transformation, changed the organization around, feels like you guys are now hitting you know, critical mass, you got your swim lanes you know, back in place. What gives you confidence you know, going forward? I think there's a, a few things that uh, give me co confidence. First of all, we have a tremendous client set, and they are the most important thing in the world. So waking up every day and supporting them. And you, I don't know if you guys have seen the new commercial that says, hey, my dad's company didn't get hacked today, or hey, my whatever. You know, when you're managing all these uh, environments, you wake up in the morning and you go, oh my God, all this stuff that's running, we're making it happen. And the value of that to the client, I think sometimes is lost because it's, it's lost in the hype of all the technology because it's behind the scenes. But you know what? You want it to behind the, be behind the scenes. It's like electricity. It's always on. It's always available. And let me tell you, we are one reliable source. You know, we're running your operation or we're doing part of your management or you were in charge of your network or we're doing your mobile or you were doing your resiliency. You know, we're accountable and we take it very, very seriously. And that client base and the, the um, advent of that client base to help other clients understand why they made that decision, that makes me very proud and also very comfortable that we can go forward. And then the second thing is, this is a very, very strong global business. I mean, you brought up the, the large accounts. Uh, but it is a business that actually operates around the world, and it is very consistent around the world. So you have all the values of economies of scale, et cetera, but you can work in the client's own market. So you can work in, you know, whether it's Italy, China, or whatever. And the third thing is our ability to take advantage of these new technologies. I mean, that integrated service management layer and putting us on the top of the stack that says, let me tell you, Mr. Client, how your, your environment is running, it's very, very important. And now being able to do that with brokerage and providing them the speed and the flexibility along with the control, but most of all, the visibility. Because at the end of the day, it's a business decision on behalf of the client. We are there to serve the client. So I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't even word, use the word hopeful. This is an awesome business and, and it's a really great part of IBM and it's great to have all this technology to hang out with and we help each other. Hey, that didn't work quite right. Okay, why don't you guys try this and back and forth. My final question to end the segment is, what's your advice to your clients when, when they hear things like uh, open technologies, Apple, uh, well, um, APIs, hybrid cloud. There's an era of openness, which in the perimeter of security is no longer there. You got APIs, you, and you have to balance that notion of running things reliably yep. at the same time putting in new technologies. It's a real integration challenge, whether it's from a startup or from an open source project. How do you guys advise your clients? Is there a playbook? Is there an IBM way? Yeah. What's your approach? We you think about you know crawl, walk, run, and crawl doesn't necessarily mean go slow, but you don't. You know, don't start with a five-year architectural strategy. You'll be older. You know, start with the, the business value that you can get by iterating and taking something to market or trying something. Because don't forget, a lot of this isn't just what's outbound. It totally changes the way your people work internally. 
and, and you have to get them used to that as well. So uh, my, my view is you'll never learn if you don't start, and everything's scary. I mean, when, you know, there's nothing, nothing that's new that's not scary the first time and can't break, but you have to crawl, walk, run, and do it in, an, do it in a fashion where you can provide business value on the way. Otherwise, just like every other project, it'll die. You know? <laughs> Laura, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Thanks, Any uh, vibe of the show so far that you can share with the folks watching, the vibe I, here so far? I think it's terrific excitement in the show so far. I think I really love the fact that we started with the, with the, uh, the, the three external speakers this morning, and I'm really, really thrilled with all the capabilities that we announced that were ours, but also weren't ours. It was great to see VMware, Apple, et cetera, up on stage, and so I hope we're putting across the, we're open, and we are definitely about a hybrid future. Laura Sanders here inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching. Go to siliconangle.tv for all the coverage. And of course, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle and get all the footage. Or go to Twitter and search Cube Gems, hashtag Cube Gems. All the footage is going to be on the, on the net. We're spraying the digital assets everywhere we possibly can. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>